today on Capitol Hill. There'll be more conversation about what he did leading up to the attack on January 6th. Today will be the seventh hearing of that committee. It says it will provide evidence that links close Trump allies to the far right extremist groups that led the attack. The panel says it will show how a tweet from the former president calling for his supporters to be in Washington on January 6th was what they call a siren call for the militia groups to show up at the Capitol to challenge the certification of the election and eventually to attack that building. Let's bring in NBC News Capitol Hill correspondent Ali Vitale. Ali, good morning. You spoke exclusively with committee member Jamie Raskin. What did he tell you? Yeah, Willie, a wide ranging interview yesterday with Chairman Raskin, who's going to be one of two members who's leading today's hearing alongside Congresswoman Stephanie Murphy. And you hit it on what this hearing is going to focus on. It's how the mob came to the Capitol on January 6th. They're going to be focusing specifically on the ways in which a White House meeting on December 18th translated into an early morning Trump tweet on December 19th that promised the crowd to be there and be wild on January 6th. That's going to be the thread that this committee follows, bringing us all the way up in their timeline to January 6th itself. It tees up what Chairman Raskin told me is going to be the final hearing in his view, that one we expect to come at this point next week. But perhaps most notably is what he told me about the nearly eight hours of testimony from the former White House counsel, Pat Cipollone. He said that during those nearly eight hours, that Cipollone corroborated nearly everything. Listen to what Raskin told me. White House counsel Pat Cipollone has corroborated um, almost everything that we had learned from the prior hearings. Um, and he had clearly tried to talk President Trump down from his efforts to uh, override the election. I mean, he, he had been apparently accepting and supportive of the lawsuits. There were eight hours of it. I was there for most of it, and I didn't hear him uh, contradict any other witness. Um, well, I certainly didn't hear him contradict uh, uh, Cassidy Hutchinson, and you know, I think he, he had the opportunity to say whatever he wanted to say, so I didn't see any, um, I didn't see any contradiction there. And we'll see him tomorrow in the hearing. He will be part of the hearing in terms of videotape testimony. And look, Willie, this is going to be the first time that we see Cipollone as part of these hearings. You'll remember the multiple times that committee members, even using the floor during these hearings, asked Cipollone to come forward. So, of course, his testimony is going to be critical. And it explains why he was so important. When you understand the focus that's going to be placed in today's hearing on that meeting on December 18th between external lawyers who were Trump allies, internal lawyers at the Trump White House, and Trump himself, this is how Raskin explained that meeting meeting and why it's so important to today. We will tell the story of what has been called uh, the craziest meeting in the Trump presidency, something that was not normal, uh, that was hot-blooded, contentious, deranged. Uh, but basically, they, they had some last-minute Hail Mary desperation ploys that they wanted to advance, including having the United States military seize the state's election machinery. Um, and appointing Sidney Powell as a roving special counsel with the power to prosecute people um, for uh, imagined or real election offenses. Um, this was opposed strongly by the White House counsel and by others on the White House staff. The meeting went for more than five hours. But at the end of this contentious and strange meeting that went into the wee hours of the night, Donald Trump apparently resolved to do what his final course of action was, and he sent out in the middle of the night um, after 1 a.m. the tweet that would be heard around the world. And that tweet um, asserted that there was no way he could have lost the election, there was definitive proof on it now, and then he said um, that there would be a big rally in Washington, be there, will be wild. 
And Willie, you and I, over the years that we were covering the Trump White House, probably had sources describe a lot of meetings to us as the craziest meeting ever. So the fact that yeah. Raskin is saying that this is that meeting that they're going to spotlight today, very notable. And just to bring you inside the room for that meeting, I know you've interviewed the Raskin many times, as have I. As soon as I walked in the room yesterday, I walked into him typing in his office furiously on his computer. As soon as I left, he went right back to it. He told me that with all of the influx of information that they've been having, the committee's not just rescheduling hearings, as we reported yesterday, but that he himself has had to rewrite his script his, for this hearing six or seven times. They are trying to bring the most fresh and up-to-date information as they get it. And this has always been the challenge for this committee, conducting active public hearings while also still actively privately investigating behind the scenes. And those eight hours of testimony from Pat Cipollone, obviously figuring into all those rewrites now with the new information. NBC's Ali Vitali with a great look ahead to the hearing today. Ali, thanks so much.